Hey there, ESAC sports fans. Welcome to week 10, set one, swick one. We're talking about completing the square. One of, oh man, there's a lot of shine on my forehead. I should shut off one of the lights so I don't look so blinding. So that looks better, doesn't it? Okay, at least it does from my perspective. Completing the square. Now, I'm going to show you the proof. I don't want you to write this down because it's ugly. Super ugly. Now, if we have a, a quadratic equation, ax squared plus bx plus c, and we want to solve this, first thing we do is move the c over to the other side. That gives me a negative c right there. The trick that I'm really going to try to show you and help you understand is look what I'm adding to both sides of the equation. b squared over 4a. That is important. That is the part I need you to focus your attention on. Now, I'll walk you through the rest of this, but once again, this is not the part that I need you to uh, focus your attention on. I mean, I'm going to talk you through it so you can see that I'm not a liar. Okay, I know some of you think I am. Now, with that being said, notice that what I did was I took this right here, and I got a common denominator of 4a. So I took and I multiplied top and bottom of that by 4a. Now the reason I did that was because I wanted to get common denominators. Now I know that's ugly algebra, but that's what I did. Okay. Next I said, okay, I want to pull out a out of those three terms. And you're like, say what? Like, dividing that by a, that's pretty easy, right? Because that leaves you with x squared. But dividing this by a, that leaves you with b over a times x. And dividing this by a, oh my goodness, what in the world? What that really does is puts a square in the denominator. That's all it does. Because division is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. Okay, now, I got that a pulled out. Notice what I did next. I multiplied by 1 over a to both sides of the equation. Now, why would I do that? Well, because I wanted this thing to happen. I wanted that to cancel out. And on the other side, what that would do, this a would then, since this is a common denominator, the a would get multiplied, and it, that would give me a denominator of 4a squared. Okay, next. Um, I feel like this video is going to be forever. Um, the one thing that we're going to practice together, which won't make sense when you look at this, is I did the factoring of this. And maybe I need to uh, show you what I did. Oh, I don't want that. I want this. Um, I factored this into x plus b over 2a times x plus b over 2a. Now, uh, if you would foil that back together, this is what you would get. All right, and since they're both the same, I wrote it as x plus b over 2a quantity squared. And of course, we all know how to get rid of a square. We take the square root, and that's what I'm showing you right there. Take the square root on both sides. Now, what happens next? I got the square root. Well, the square and the square root cancel out on the left side. Okay, so there's no more square root anymore and no more square. But on the other side, don't forget you got a plus and minus. And I know what the square root of 4a squared is. It's 2a. That's why there's no more radical on the bottom. And look, this can be moved to the other side. And when I do that, folks, something extremely beautiful happens. We get a very important thing. I don't know why that says P-R-E, pre. -E, pre. Um, we get what's called the quadratic formula. And we will eventually do this. Um, so I'm hoping to show you that the quadratic formula is comes from completing the square. But we need to do completing the square before we do the quadratic formula. All right, so let's come over here and see what it takes to complete the square. Remember that little trick I showed you, b squared over 4a? Here it is. And so we have... Remember, ax squared plus bx. What we're trying to do is figure out what in the world is, the, what, what would you add to make it a perfect square? And I'll show you what I mean by perfect square. So if you follow my little logic, b squared over 4a, you know, with b is negative 20 and a is 1, 
you end up with 400 over 4, which gives me 100. So that's the answer to their question. Now, eventually, I'm going to ask you, maybe I should do this. I should put this like right up here. That way it looks like I'm actually looking at you. Eventually, we will be factoring this. Okay, not right away, but we will be. And if you want to think of factors that multiply together to give you 100, who, that add up to negative 20, they would be negative 10 and negative 10. Notice that those are both the same. Bingo! Perfect square, right? Something times itself. That's what we're eventually going to be, uh, be doing. And how do you go from negative 20 to negative 10? That's right, you cut it in half. So we'll be doing that over and over again, and you will be so sick of it. You will, trust me. Okay, so the next one, same idea. B squared over 4A. So that's negative 6 squared over 4. Please make sure you understand. I'm putting parentheses around it for a reason, because you do have to get, when you square a negative number, you do get a positive. All right. Uh, and over 4 times A, that would give me 9. So we are adding 9. If I were to factor that, that would be t minus 3 times t minus 3, which is t minus 3 quantity squared. Uh, that is extra. That's not some, a part of the question. All I needed was a 9 there. But I just, now that one's a duplicate. I don't know how I got a duplicate in there. Moving on. Next, question 4. Same old, same old. 24 squared. Now you'll notice I didn't put parentheses. You don't really need them with positive numbers. You need them more with negative numbers, but just, you know, just for kicks and giggles, maybe I should put it in there. Okay, so squared it, divided by 4 times 1, ended up with 144. That's the answer to the question. If we're going to practice uh, factoring it, it would be n plus 12 quantity squared, because all I'm doing is taking half of 24. Clear that out. 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 I know I'm weird. Okay, question five. Uh, so here's where we're actually solving the, qu the question. Now, you'll notice that x, whoa, what's that doing? Um, oh, okay, got to hit this. You'll notice that this right here already is a perfect square. I can factor that into x minus 2 times x minus 2. Nice. I don't know what in the world. Okay. That's the same thing as x minus 2 quantity squared. That's the part in the green. If I take the square root on both sides, I get x minus 2 over here. And over here I get plus and minus 6. Then I can take that negative 2 and move it to the other side. That's going to give me 6 plus 2 and negative 6 plus 2. Now 6 plus 2 is 8. Don't be the kid that says, oh, if the first one's 8, the other one's got to be negative 8. Okay, wrong. That doesn't work that way. So um, just make sure you actually work it out because obviously it's negative 4. Next question. Okay, notice how I'm abbreviating complete the square with CTS. Okay, uh, it's not a disorder. Okay, it's complete the square. Um, okay, on this particular question, you'll notice that the first thing I did was I moved the 1 to the other side. That would be by subtracting, and that's how I got this 48. And then I did the B squared over 4A. 4 squared over 4 times 4, since A is 4. I ended up with 1. So then I added 1 to both sides. Oh my goodness, it took me right back to the beginning. I feel so stupid. Why did I subtract it? Well, in the future, when you bring this over to the other side, it's not going to end up being that way. So I understand in this, in this scenario, it looked kind of dumb. Like, why is he doing that? He's just adding 1 back, you know. So... Uh, Notice that what I did next was I took these three and I pulled out the four. You're always pulling that value out. And when you do that, you pull that four out, what you're doing is you're going through and you're dividing each of these by four. Now, obviously the first one is just going to give you w squared. Second one is just going to give you w. The last one does give you one quarter. I know you don't like fractions, but we have to do them. Okay, next. 
Uh, let me clear this so I can move over to the other side. You'll notice that I am dividing by 4 on both sides. Why did he do that? Eh, so I can get rid of those. Okay, so that puts me at 49 over 4, which you're having a difficult time seeing because of whatever. We Let me pause this. That is frustrating. Okay, so we got the 49 over 4. Right, oops, moved it. All right, so when you come up here, we're going to, oops, that ain't it. Got to lock it in place. We're going to uh, break it apart, factor it, um, and it does break apart into W plus 1 half times W plus 1 half or W plus 1 half squared. We took this middle value, which is positive 1, cut it in half. That's where you get this 1 half from. Okay, now, because it's a perfect square, we can take the square root. Now, I promise you some of the other problems we're going to do don't involve fractions. So it will be easier on those kind of questions. But here, you know, if you could do it with the fractions, man, you're, you're golden. So uh, took the square root on both sides. We got what? W plus 1 half equals, ooh, plus and minus. Yeah, don't forget that. And then the square root of 49 is 7, right? And the square root of 4 is 2. All right. And then we can take this 1 half and bring it to the other side. All right. So that gives me 7 halves. Let's see if I did this somewhere. And that. And oh, I did. Beautiful. So 7 halves minus 1 half would be 6 halves. Okay. Also known on the street as 3. And negative 7 halves minus 1 half would be negative 8 halves, also known on the street as negative 4. So my, my answers are 3 and negative 4 to this particular question. Let's move to the next one. You can pause it if you want to copy. I understand. But I'm already way over what I need to be. Whoa, 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 where'd it go? Okay, so more completing the square. Uh, I brought the 9 over to the other side. They gave me 16. Then I did my B squared over 4 times A. Oh, my goodness. I got 9 again. Uh, what? That's the exact same number we started with. Okay. So, in other words, I already had a perfect square. I just didn't realize it. Okay. Um, now, pull out the 4. Always pulling out the 4. Whatever this number is right here, that's what's going to get factored out. And so you're going through and you're dividing everything by 4, by 4, by 4. Okay, and that's what gives me W squared, 3W, and 9 over 4. I know, ugly fractions you wish you could deal without. Uh, then you can see that I divided everything by 4, which made a fraction on the other side. But both of them are perfect squares, 25 and 4. That's good news. When we factor this, remember... We factor it into two parts, w plus, w plus, and uh, we take the middle value, which is 3, and we cut it in half. So that's 3 over 2, 3 over 2, and that's where we get this w plus 3 over 2 quantity squared. To get rid of that square, we take the square root on both sides. And we got the plus and minus when we take the square root in a solving situation, and the square root of 25 is 5, and the square root of 4 is 2. And then, of course, we can subtract the three halves over to the other side. We're almost done, folks, on this one. And when we subtract the three halves to the other side, we get, let's see, 5 take away 3 is 2 over 2, also known on the street as 1. And negative 5 minus 3 is negative 8 over 2, and that also known on the street as negative 4. So those are the two answers we get for that particular question. Thank you for dealing with me and throughout that entire uh, really, really long set of notes for this SWIC. Thanks. Bye.